I got hit by a false copyright block, not a strike, not a monetization claim, a block. So first, what are we looking at? This is my video, Child Protective Services Investigating Drag Kid, in quotes. Audio visual content manually detected by claimant live video network, live nation video network. And there's a dispute in progress because I filed a claim. But guess what? They don't have to respond for a month. So this video might be down until then. Fortunately, I use something called BitChute to automatically archive all of my videos. And if you go to bitshoot.com slash Timcast, the video is right there, big, beautiful, and bold, and you can watch all of it. Nowhere in my video did I use any audiovisual content from any of these companies. The video is basically just me talking about the issue of drag kids, citing some news articles, and showing screenshots. The only music in the video comes from my music, uh, music, uh, music library, Epidemic Sound which I pay for. However, it would seem that this is a wave of false claims hitting anyone who dare talk about Desmond the drag kid. Now, it is my opinion that the parents are, uh, of Desmond are irresponsible and committing something that is very, very bad uh, against this child, putting them in the spotlight. I think child acting is bad, right? It's nothing to do with drag. But I would also like to point out in this video, Okay, one of the reasons why they probably didn't like it is that I point out how this child, who's I believe 11 years old or around that age, is dancing on stage in front of a bunch of grown men, pulls their clothes off, and then is handed money. Some people have said, Tim, that's just a costume change. Don't care. I know people who are in the uh, sex work industry, and I reached out to some people to ask them about their opinion on what's happening, and I was told by strippers he was stripping. Why? Not all strip clubs allow nudity. This is what people don't seem to understand. I know most, I guess most people don't go to strip clubs. I've only ever actually been once. It was in LA and it was after some big party where everyone thought it was a, a, like a, a, a video event, like a, a award show or something. After this award show, they're like, we're all going to the strip club. And I'm like, sure, whatever. However, I reached out to some people and asked them and they said, there are many clubs that require women to be wearing underwear, you know, top and bottom at all times. So what they'll do is they'll wear something on the outside and they'll pull off a piece of clothing because they're strippers and then they take money from the audience. Now, some people think there's a difference and that uh, I, I was told by some that they're not legitimate stripper, strip clubs or whatever. But the point is they still have poles. They still do dancing. So if you're gonna have a little boy, little boy dance around doing that, sorry, it's, it's no different than what some of my stripper friends have done. Well, interestingly, I'm not the only one affected by this. Lauren Chen, who is, uh, you, you may be familiar with Lauren, she's a YouTuber as well, uh, around the same size as my channels, said, my video on Desmond, the child drag queen just got taken down from YouTube. Why? For apparently using a Refinery29 clip that isn't even in the video. I used clips from Fatherly and L, and any clips used were around 30 to 40 seconds uh, long after, and definitely covered under fair use. However, my video used none of these things. My video was just screenshots of news stories and commentary. There were screenshots from YouTube, no video and no sound. And I was reading, I was pointing out comments had nothing to do with the video. Here we can see that she received this. Hi, Lauren Chen. Due to a copyright claim, your video has been blocked. This means that your video can no longer be played. This appears to be false blocking to strip the videos down for at least a month. Within a month, if they don't respond, then the videos will uh, will return. It's my understanding. However, I fully intend to fight this to every degree possible because I am no one to be trifled with. And this is a false copyright claim against me and other people, and I'm going to pursue it to the fullest extent of the law, civil and uh, legal. Uh, I'm sorry, civil and criminal. Lauren tweeted, we take copyright seriously on my channel, and we've never had a video taken down. We've had content claimed, which affected monetization before, but it was technically fair use, and the videos were never just flat out removed from my library. Obviously, I'm appealing. However, copyright appeals on YouTube don't go to YouTube, but are instead settled by the person filing the copyright claim not the best way to settle disputes, clearly. But I will absolutely go above and beyond to any capacity, any and all capacities, to make sure that whoever filed these false complaints will face the brunt of legal recourse. You can mark my words. However, interestingly, after Lauren Chen tweeted, I, tw- I-, I messaged her and said, hey, just want to know, let-, let you know this happened to me too. She said, um, she quote tweeted me, and someone responded to her tweet about it with, I literally just got hit by Live Nation 2 for a video on Desmond is Amazing. There is literally literally no video in it either. 
Lauren said, this is ridiculous. Fourth YouTuber to get hit, uh, to get their Desmond video taken down by Live Nation. And we can see this is a screenshot pl- posted by the user Omegon due to a copyright claim, et cetera, et cetera. And the video title is the story of Desmond is amazing. Copyright content, Desmond is amazing. If this young drag queen is the future, we're feeling great about it. 2018 by Refinery29, claimed by Live Nation Video Network. I believe this may be false. I, I believe someone may be claiming to act as Live Nation, but it's probably just some individual who doesn't want the videos up, who is taking action against anyone who dare, dare talk about it. Someone uh, responded. He's apparently a sacred cow. It's pretty creepy. But wait, there's more. It's not just this. This was sent to me by Luke Rutkowski of We Are Change saying this person had reached out to him. This person made a video titled Pedophilia Agenda and Desmond is Amazing. They were they, they, uh, they and they received this. This is their dispute uh, form. Reason for a dispute. This video is my original content and I own all of the rights to it. Explanation. This video is merely of me talking LOL. I'm the only one in the video. Yes, an individual who made a video where she was literally just talking to her cell phone was flagged falsely for copyright. This is a problem with YouTube. There is a huge problem with these false claims. And uh, this woman, she, she doesn't even have a big channel. She has 143 subscribers. How did they find this? Somebody must be searching YouTube for anything related to Desmond and filing false claims against it. I'd be willing to bet this video you're watching now doesn't get a false claim against it. Because I am not going to put Desmond at all anywhere in the description, in the title, or anything like that. It's only, uh, I'm going to title this video something like, all caps, I got a false copyright block on my channel, or some, something to that effect. Uh, we can see I'm already being taken down. Copyright number one. So uh, then I highlight this story. I want to talk a little bit about this issue. Beyond just what's happening here, what we can see is that YouTube has had this ongoing problem for a long time. YouTube's copyright strikes have become a tool for extortion. Scammers are threatening to shut down channels unless the owners pay up. Why? Because YouTube doesn't know how to handle this problem adequately. Why is it that every other service has no problem dealing with copyright? But in February, we saw this story. Let's read a little bit about it. An anonymous blackmailer was caught, has caught at least two YouTube creators in a scheme involving cash ransom and esoteric copyright laws. Last week, both creators shared stories of how their channels were being threatened with a third copyright strike and the possible termination of their channels from an anonymous extortionist. The scammer offered to reverse the strikes in return for a payment to a Bitcoin wallet, which as of this writing remains empty, or to an adjoining PayPal account that has since been deleted. Once you receive our payment, we will cancel both strikes on your channel, the blackmailer wrote in a telegram message to one creator, Abby Raids, who runs a small channel dedicated to Minecraft walkthroughs. You are free to charge back if we don't, but we assure you we will. We'll give you a very short amount of time to make your decision, they added. Copyright strikes serve as an, an important purpose for YouTube, preventing protected material from pop songs to movie clips from being used without authorization. YouTubers ser- uh, served with one or two strikes automatically have the offending videos deleted and can also have certain channel features like the ability to monetize restricted in the long term. Getting those privileges back can take months of work, especially for smaller channels that are often overlooked in favor, excuse me, of their larger or more popular counter- counterparts. So here's my understanding. I do not believe I have received a strike on my channel for this content. Uh, I believe it's just blocked. Now, there's a few things that can happen. If they copyright claim content, it can just send money to them. I don't know if I will receive my normal ad monetization for this video because it has been blocked. And now on my channel, it shows a dollar sign that's black with a line through it. Demonetization is a yellow circle with a dollar sign in it. And demonetization, you still get ads, but very, very few. So you make some money, but almost nothing. The green circle is what's, what's normally, normally there. So again, I don't think this is a copyright strike on my channel, though the video has been blocked. So maybe I need to check actually. But it's entirely fake. And YouTube has known about these issues for a long time and they don't do anything about it. They say, this isn't the first time that YouTube's less than perfect copyright system has stabbed creators in the back. The platform's hands-off approach to moderation has allowed copyright trolls to thrive for years, not only to extort money, but to dox, slander, or troll. They can also be used to suppress negative news. Bingo! Some companies have served comedians with copyright strikes in an attempt to stifle any videos mocking their brand. Is that what we're seeing now? Troublemakers have also used copyright system to fish or dox smaller channels in order to submit a counterclaim 
YouTube's policies dictate that creator must provide their personal information to the channel filing the claim, which can open the door to real life harassment. Thank you, YouTube. That's exactly, you know, it's right here to suppress negative news. I'm going to end with one last thing. One last thing. Um, a YouTuber who earned thousands from videos of her kids performing was charged with child abuse. I'm not going to read into the story. I just wanted to have this um, on this video as we talk about what it's like when you make children perform in these ways. And of course, they always say that we want our, you know, our kids want to do this. It's not anything we're making them do. But uh, I'm going to have to say, I typically am under, you know, when I see kids holding up protest signs or engaging in certain behavior, I'm going to go ahead and assume someone's pulling the strings on that. Sure, the kids might claim, yes, I want to do this because the parents tell them to. But you know what? Maybe they really don't. I'll leave it there. Stick around. I got more videos coming up in a few minutes.